Hello, I'm Father Mike Kassar from St. Thomas Aquinas and St. John Church and Student Center. Thanks for joining me as we make our way together through His Excellency's Excellent Adventure, or if you'd prefer, Bishop Boyer's Bible Bonanza. The scholar Robert Alter has written, the story of David is probably the greatest single narrative representation in antiquity of a human life evolving by slow stages through time, shaped and altered by the pressures of political life, public institutions, family, the impulses of the body, and the eventual sad decay of flesh. The story of David, which Alter talks about, of course, includes the story of Saul, and it is an extraordinary story. In chapter 8, the people have begged Samuel to give them a king, and God grants them their request with an unforgettable sadness. To Samuel, God says, it is not you they have cast aside, but me. And to God's warning that kings exploit and oppress their subjects, the people of Israel answer, we too will be like all the nations, and our king shall rule us. God's people who are selected to be set aside to be holy have made their choice to renounce the call in order to be like everyone else. Pretty bad, right? Yet notice what God says today in our reading about Saul. You shall anoint him prince over my people Israel, and he shall rescue my people. Yes, their outcry has reached me. Did you catch that? Saul will be a deliverer sent in loving response to the oppression of the people. So is Saul a consequence of a sinful rejection of God, or is he a grace? Or perhaps both. Perhaps God is both allowing their freedom to work, allowing them to receive the bad that they desire, and also working through the wreck of their own choices for their betterment. When they reject God and their unique vocation, they invite oppression on themselves. All the while, God uses their very decisions to liberate them. What does that tell us? What are the consequences for us when we renounce our calling to holiness, when we choose to be like everyone else, and when we make something other than God our king? Well, the oppression and slavery that follows from sin. And while God leaves us to our sin, he doesn't leave us in our sin, at least not if we let him. In every situation, even those we are in for no one's fault but our own, God's grace is active as a liberating force working to draw us up. So if you've ever been there, or are there now, or know someone who is there, rejoice. God's grace is near, and you only have to look for it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the first and primary author of sacred scripture. Help me to receive what you have revealed in your holy word. Give me a greater hunger to daily seek you in the scriptures so that I might come to know you and your Son more intimately. May your Holy Spirit open me to be transformed by your Holy Word throughout this year of the Bible. We ask these blessings through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.